What's up everybody, how's it going? And welcome to the third playthrough, blind playthrough, I should add, of this channel, Cyberpunk Bartender Action Valhalla. And I don't know what I'm getting myself into, it's this uh, bartender simulation, visual novel type of game. Um, I think well, the what I'm trying to do here is the first playthrough, the blind playthrough, it's going to be just obviously me going through the game and maybe maybe just maybe if I um, if I feel it uh, we might collect all the achievements there, there's not that many and it might be some kind of like walk through -y kind of kind of video but let's get right into it new game all right thank you for playing Valhalla this game is best play game comfortable grab some drinks some snacks and enjoy so sit back and relax we hope you have a good time. Alright. Let's get right into it. Psst. Right, so there's this person called Anna right here. Hey, over here. Boo, whoa, she's like right there on the screen right there. Well How's that for an entrance? That's a that's a pretty good entr entrance right there. Oh. She kinda like Alright, she kinda like had some kind of Signal problem there. Come on, Joe. Looks look sharp. The game starting of the player needs a good first impression of his main character. All right. I know you served a bunch of tuxedo-clad corgis over the weekend, and the bar will eventually close. And I'll admit, my little prank on you might have gone a bit overboard. But remember, life is 90% how you take it. Stay focused and look at the brighter side of things. I have no idea what the brighter side is, but you should totally find it. In any case, you should totally check that pet parcel uh, you just got. Alright, see ya. Whoa. Alright. Oh, ugh, just a dream. Hmm, there's something near the door. Alright, so is this our main protagonist? Alright, Jill? Chapter 1, Premiere. Premiere? Primer? Alright, here we go. Achievement unlock. Good evening. So we, we have two achievements when you boot up the game. And now when we just start the new... Uh, start Just start the game as well. So your membership to Shining Fingered will automatically renew on the 17th. Make sure your account has at least $800 by then. Make sure to save your data using the Life Backup app. You can now browse the Augmented Eye. Alright. Alright, so welcome. Welcome to you. So there's, I guess there's us there. And our boss right there. Hold to unlock. And there's us right there. Four. Alright, so that's our... So who's, what's that letter from? Nobody. So four, who's four? Uh, our, our tablet maybe? So let's say welcome Jill. We could just like save and load right there, alright. Alright, so that's our augmented eye. Mass emigration continue as, oh, let's go back there. Mass emigration continue as, Wonderlanders are the newest threat. Cyborgs and heels return next year. Alright, Cyborg and Heels return next year to the Super Silver Thunderdome by Lana Sniff. The popular show Cyborg and Heels return to the Dome this March, with tickets going on sale in January. Cyborg and Heels is a massive stage show about a... Alright, oh, we, we could go down here, nice. Liking it. Uh, it's a show about a cyborg fighting terrorism wearing, ha wearing heels, not high heels unfortunately. Director Quinton Hater Explains Cyborg and Heels special appeal during an exclusive interview with the Augmented Eye. What's not to love about it? It's a cyborg wearing heels, cutting stuff! That's literally something we've never seen before, a niche market I'm willing to capitalize on. Check out the full interview in the next few weeks, exclusively here at the Augmented Eye. His acting is unnatural. I don't think he cares about the rules of nature, anyways. Alright. Alright. We've got some music right here. We could get the soundtrack, that's pretty nice. Alright, let's... Alright, so we could go to work. We could check our settings, that's alright. Let's go to work. That's first day on the work right here. Tuesday, December 13th. Good evening. 
Ah, hey there, Jill. Oh, hey, John. When will you admit you have a John Face skill? Alright, so Gillian here. When you let people call you Julius. Julies? Julies. Quiet. Are you okay? You look distracted. Where's Boss? Dunno, she went out to buy some stuff and... Did you hear what I to just told you? You said something? Yes, that you look distracted. Very, very distracted. There's nothing, I'm just thinking about stuff. What stuff? Well, I have to pay rent by the 30th, which is always stressful and... Ah... Uh, there's also the fact that I spent a full hour yesterday apparently talking to myself. Oh. Not to mention the fact that two days ago, I found out the bar is at risk of closing, damn. So not only is my life being shaken up, I'm apparently going crazy. On top of that, Nutrien uh, fall left me with a completely empty wallet, and I'll uh, get evicted if I miss Ren again. Fall, Nutrien fall, 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 fall is, is our apartment, then the tablet. And there's, uh, there are all the beer cans around my apartment then. Jill, sorry, did you say something? Yep, distracted. Can you really work today? Of course I can. Let's go through the basics, then shall we? Just in case. If you can make a uh, piano man, I'll skip the rest, but bear with me for a second here, okay? Let's start with a sugar rush, alright. Okay, look at the recipe using the navigation part in the recipe book that will show up on the top left. You can also sort drinks by flavors like sweet or types like manly. Drag the desired amount of ingredients from their cells on the right to the shaker in the center. Alright. Alright, Gil. When done, press the mix button and then press it again to stop mixing. Click the serve button of the drink itself to serve it and it'll, that'll be all. Oh, but if the drink looks messed up, you'll need to press the reset button and try again. You can press reset at any time, even when while the shaker is moving, don't be afraid to use it, alright. Gil, I'm the one who, that went through the formal BTC instructions. Then this should be no problem. Alright, here we go. <sighs> alright, so this is uh, on the left screen, the navigation bar. Alright, so Gil wants either Sugar Rush or Piano Man. If I mess up the ingredients of the drink, I can press the reset button and try again. Let's give him a Piano Man. Uh, using the map bridge for... Alright, alright, yeah, I see. By name. Uh, P, Piano Man. That's Piano Woman. Alright, here we go. A Piano Man is two Adelhide, three Bronson Extracts, five Parallel de Delta, five Flander Guide, and three Karmatrine. Trine. All on the rocks and mixed. All on the rocks and mixed. This drink does not represent the opinions of the bar pianoist union or its association. Sour, promo, and strong. Alright. Alright, let's start making that up so we get... Alright, so two Adele High, three Bronson Extracts, five Powdered Delas, five Fauna Guide, alright, and three Karma Train, alright, on the rocks as well. And mix. Alright. Oh, it's mixed. It's, we're mixing in. Let's stop it right there. Fail. What? Is this just a lime mix, maybe? Alright. On the rocks. Let's mix it up again. One, two, three. There we go. Piano Man. Here. Happy. Oh, happy, yeah. Alright, I know what I said. Yes, very. I stand corrected, so we've got a nice achievement there. Now, let's get working. Oh yeah, before I forget. Hmm? You can make any drink big by doubling the amount of ingredients. Alright, gotta remember that. But if the recipe already has over 10 ingredients, the drink is already big. Okay. <laughs> oh, and if a recipe says it uses optional Karma Shrine, it means you could use none or fill it to the brim. Interesting. Optional carmotide trine, car car karma trine, doesn't count towards making a big drink, of course. 
Parmatrine is the f alcoholic factor in a drink. It doesn't change the taste, but the amount still has no effect. Alright. If you add too much of it, the client will get drugged faster, so please be mindful of that. Alright. Are you done with the exposition? Now I am, yeah. Hey guys. Oh, bot. Eh? Oh, so, so this person's that boss. Who's that? I don't know. Found her while I was out shopping. Why bring her here? Well, it was either leave her outside at the mercy of society's fineness, or bring her unconscious body in here. She's going to make such a ruckus when she wakes up, you know that. That's all for you, uh, that deal would. I'll be in my office. Alright, so, okay. You can't just push that responsibility onto us. We have work to do, damn it. There are two of you. Believe in yourself. <sighs> do you think Chief knocked her out? Nah, that's unlikely. She'll be crowing, crowing, crow, crowing about it, or taunting us if that were the case. And it's not like her to pick on such a small girl, at least not unprovoked. Yeah, you're right. We'll just need to be keep keep it quiet. She seems to be just sleeping soundly, not comatose. Yeah. Okay then, time to start the night. Yes. I'll start working while you go clean the bathroom. Um, come again? Well, you spent the whole weekend and Monday doing God knows what. We've had some interesting clients come in. Dogs? Lots of them. You're joking. Gil, you've known me for how long now? Do I look like that kind of woman who would make a joke like that? Well. So, as punishment for leaving me to deal with all of that on my lonesome, you'll be in charge of cleaning the bathrooms. Have fun. Just that? Fine, I see no problem. Where's the cleaning stuff? Here. You brought that from home, didn't you? That, I did. Fine. Alright, here we go. With that out of the way, let's play some music on the new jukebox. This model needs to have all of its 12 slots filled with songs before I could start. I wonder what's the logic behind that decision. Alright, so we need 12 songs. Alright, let's see the preview. That's not- whoa, 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 whoa. Or should I just leave it like that, looting preview? Alright. Let's just add uh, a few things here. Let's just fill it all up just randomly. Reminiscence, alright. Digital Drive and Neo District, alright. Oh, we just. Alright, here we go. Alright, time to mix up drinks and change lives. Hey, you, get me a beer. Oh, sure, right on it. Alright, so he wants a beer. So one of these bad boys, two of these, followed by a Delta, two, and four. Bubbly clean. All mix. Alright. Alright, here we go. Here you go. No, no, this, is, this isn't gonna cut it. Give me a big one. Um, sure. Beer was enough, apparently. A big one. So we need a double in, alright. Alright, here we go, let's make- oh, shit. That didn't- that didn't fucking work. Uh... Alright, let's shake it up. Alright, there we go. How about this one? Ah, yes. Now that's- this is one fit for a man like me. Right. You're lucky I was in a meeting close by. This hellhole could certainly use a present like mine. Although, to be fair, work has taken me to worse hellholes, like New Jersey 3, I, I, I. Huh? What kind of work do you do, mister? You're talking to Donovan D. Dawson, chief editor and owner of the Augmented Eye. Wow! Alright. Nothing gets published there without my blessings. 
The day star with quite the interesting fellow, it seems. Yeah. So you're the one to uh, to blame for the barrage of daily articles on Alice Rabbit, then. Hey, people love those articles. They love reading about the, that urban legend. Can you blame them? The idea of some wildcard hacker working for their own goals and nobody else's. That's the kind of corny shit that brings the clicks. From all kinds of people, a bit of that clickbait right there. And the clicks bring money, and money brings nice stuff. Stuff like cars and houses and plastic surgery for the missus and her kids. Well, I'm not complaining about the fact that you were writing about the hacker, just that you write about them every single day. Some of it isn't even news, just speculation or copycats. I can't read your newspaper's daily feed without running into at least one article about Alice Rabin. Well, first of all, I don't write about it, my interns do, yeah true. The poor bastards think he'll help them make them full-time employees. I'm just capitalizing on this topic while it's popular, I guess so. And second, you're uh, tired of one article about a supposed hacker. But not all of the daily stories about murders and other horrors? Well, I always filter out that section. I don't want to start my day scared or bitter. And bitter. I have enough pressure and problems as is. I don't need to add glitch cities, lovely citizens to the list. You're smarter than you look, kid. But if more people were like you, I'll go bankrupt for the lack of traffic. Still, maybe my job would be easier. How so? People get desensitized, uh, I'm guessing desensitized right there. People get bored of certain kind of news after seeing it repeatedly. When I started in this job, I, it's only took the news of some elderly woman being killed to guarantee clicks. Wow. Now you need an elderly woman carrying a sick baby boy getting hit by a truck. That's not enough. They need a full sob story behind it. That's why I like those urban legends. They're easier to write about and you can make up any shit you want. Spam them while they're hot. And even people like you, people who avoid the murder stories will see them. That brings in money. And like I said, money's good. Huh? I guess he has a point. What about the opinion columns? Aren't those a good source of traffic too? Oh, I hate those rats. They just write about how they're better than everyone else. They might also write about how everyone that likes a certain something should be pseudomonized. The worst part about that is they know half of our clicks come from them, so they all get all diva-like on my ass. I think you're being too harsh. What about... No, wait. I was thinking of another newspaper. Yeah, the columnists on your page are annoying. See? The kid on the restaurant critique column. Uh, mm, shit. Forgot the brat's name. Restaurant? I believe that's... That kid couldn't care less about his name. Anyway, his comment is the least visitive of the bunch. Gets less hits than the obituaries. Obituaries? However, he still insists that I keep paying for his adventures to outrage his restaurants. I wouldn't have any problem with that if he actually wrote about half of the places he visits. How so? He rarely writes about the places the newspaper sends him to. I even heard he tries to get free meals by proclaiming that he's a food critic. Poor bastard, only gets laughed at when he says that. I do remember some guy coming here asking for free drinks and saying he was a critic or whatever. Did he look like a fat child with a really small face? No. Wasn't this one then. <laughs> anyway, all this talk made me thirsty. Try give me a beer this time please. Coming right up. Alright. So one of... One of that, two of that, one, two, one, two, three, four. Mix it up. Boom. So, one beer. Yeah, this is a beer alright. Keep it up kid, you'll get better someday. So tell me, do you see many celebrities in this hellhole? Please stop referring to this place as the hellhole. If a place smells like soap and dog piss, I'm within my constitutional rights to call this a hellhole. I'm doing my best here, thank you very much. Lol, <laughs> thanks Gilligan. Who was that? Nobody important. Hey, I heard that. Don't be offended by what I said, kid. I'm the son of the building, not you. You could think of it 
as a small hole in hell, rather a hellish hole if you like. Charming. So, celebrities? Not really, at least not that I know of. Why? Well, to begin with, you have a serious VIP as a client, but I don't see you losing your shit. You're not making me feel special, honey. And second, because I'm always up for gossip regarding famous people, especially the red carpet kind of famous. Those folk people pretend uh, to love, but actually want to see fall from grace. Pretend to love? Fall for grace? What do you think that gossip about famous people always sell? People pretend that they love celebs, but what they really want is to see their idols torn down to their level. They want to see them suffer, to get their comeuppance for daring to be so much more successful than them. Nah, I think gossip is just something everybody enjoys, but nobody wants to admit to enjoying. You saw wrong, but even if you were right, it wouldn't change the fact that people love that kind of stuff. They want to escape their lives by living someone else, somebody else's. Sally, I fail to see the appeal in that whole thing. What do I care if this guy I saw in some random movie was wearing socks with sandals, or if they're dating God knows who? Granted, socks with sandals is practically a public indice, but still. Oh please, as a bartender, I bet you have a strong, uh, voyeuristic uh, streak. Uh, your kind always loves to hear that stuff. Just like hairdressers, this sounds hypocritical coming from you. E even if that's the case, I don't sensationalize what people do. I don't make it more than that person you know from the TV acts like a human. Sensationalize is the key word here. Just the other day, I just saw this committee judge bitching over what some girl was wearing to the store. No matter what you say, these people don't exist solely to entertain the public. But this problem exists because they're the ones constantly cultivating the idea that they're perfect and untouchable. Going to exotic locals, dressing in elegant ways, indulging in every luxury they can think of. All that just leaves the public craving for those little moments when they make a mistake and fall to that level. Can't say that's a lie, but sometimes the crowd just wants to see their human. Hey. That's that dude that plays the nice guy is indeed a really nice guy. To be fair, the gossip articles don't help, sensationalizing everything. It feels like they're instigating and a behavior that shouldn't be acknowledged in the first place. You like your big words, eh, Brad? Well, two can play that game of. Well, to be honest, uh, I'm getting a bit. <laughs> I'm gonna get a bit tongue-tied saying these big words. Hmm. Hey, you're a bartender, right? No, I'm a lab rat hellbent on the world conquest. Sarcasm wastes my time, my money, and your energy. Refrain from using it. Uh, okay, Donovan. I won't try to do that again. Anyway, I just realized that a bartender like you must have heard quite a few stories in her career. Talk about changing topics. Maybe why? When you like a column talking about those, I bet they would sell quite well. It would be like that priest who published confessionary stories, and they go and then got excommunicated and lynched. People usually tell me all this stuff because they know I'm just a simple bartender, a personal stranger of sorts. We could have you ghostwriting half of our staff do that. They do. You don't really think Lana Smith is just one person, do you? Figures. Anyway, eventually, the people from the stories would know it's them and blame me. Not only would that hurt us as a business, it would hurt me. I really like hearing clients round about their lives. Oh, and it would hurt the clients too, I guess. Well, if you ever retire, that offer is waiting for you. Yeah, like you'll remember me two weeks from now. Sure. Do you want another drink, Mr. Donovan? Mr. Donovan. Alright, calm down, mate. Mr. Donovan. Did you say- did I say something wrong? No, not at all. I just really like the sound of that. Alright. Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Is it really that special? At work, everyone calls me Mr. Dawson. Or boss. Boss is just a title. It's too impersonal and cold. It is? 
Mr. Dawson was my father and grandfather is too general for Mr. Donovan. Well, that's more like it. They're referring to me, to the man in front of them, not to my family, not to my position as a boss, to me. Do you want your employees to get personal with you, Mr. Donovan? Oh, gods no, but I want them to fear me, not because I'm their boss or the name appearing in their paychecks, but rather because I strike mortal dread into them. Starting tomorrow, I'm going to make everyone call me Dan. Oh yeah, you were asking something, what was it? Drink, another one, do you? Ah yes, yes. You know what, third time's the charm, give me a beer. Alright. Damn, you like your beers, alright. Oh, one out of two, yeah, that's a one, two. Mix it up a bit. There we go, one beer. Yeah, I guess this one's good enough for now. Good to hear. Say, kid, does this bar have any investors? He didn't call it a hellhole. There was some bloke named Sven that wanted to give us money if we stamped his face all over the place. But aside from that, no. These bars are pretty much like any fast food chain, so there are no local investors. Why? Just want to let you know how lucky bas you bastards are. Investors suck harder than my first wife's mouth. Whoa, whoa, that, was, that got a bit into it. Those bastards think they're so important because they put their money in their company, in the company. Well, that's, I mean, you give me money so you can make more. Let me do my thing, I'll give you your money. But no, they have to stick their noses and start changing the silliest of stuff. What good is it to be a boss if you still have to work for someone else? You still have to answer to unions, the government, and those kind of organizations, don't you? Yeah, but that's paperwork. I'll make somebody else do it and call it a day. These losers ask for meetings. They start talking about stuff they don't like, stuff they found offensive. And there's always that one guy or gal that says, hey, why don't you do what the other paper newspaper does? Recently, they told me that they needed more clicks. More clicks. God forbid. I make sure to keep stuff spicy while still keeping production quality up. They never, it's never enough from them. Well, you know what? They want more clicks. I'll give them more clicks. I'll show, show them what happens when I do what they want and don't reject ideas. They'll know who the hell Donovan D. Dawson is. Shall I be worried? Nah. 